Hello, please be gentle. Um, as you may see, I'm a little bit pregnant at the moment, which may seem ordinary run of the mill for some, but for myself and my partner, me standing here with child is a tremendously happy achievement. He's um, more than a decision, he's a bit of a review of the last four years of our life. See, with my firstborn, my new mum's status and enjoyment was completely stolen from me by postnatal depression. It wiped out who I was, my ability to love, feel and think, and just replaced it with this robotic human suffering with depression. And it's this depression that I want to talk to you about today. I don't really want to get bogged down in what statistics say, that apparently only one in ten women suffer from it, as noted by our health system online. I don't really want to continue the perpetuation of these pretty wishy-washy signs and symptoms pages that I've read. I want to take you through the most awful and life-altering time in my life because this is the reality of postnatal depression that we all keep hidden when we suffer from it. I want to show you what it does to a woman and her life and family in real terms and why it is so incredibly important that we speak out about the truth about parenthood and mental illness. See, parents seem to live under this illusion that they're not good enough parents based on what they see around them. We see this image of motherhood on TV, social media and film. It depicts this mother that's perfect, she's got it all together, she doesn't scream, she doesn't shout and she doesn't swear. We compare ourselves to this and it's extremely damaging, more so for those suffering with mental illness. And this is why it's important that we stand in front of you and see the reality of this illness. See, my perception of what, to, what it meant to be a mother completely crushed me after the birth of my daughter in 2015. My daughter was born and she was healthy, she was happy, cute, small and gorgeous, absolutely perfect. But I didn't see that. I didn't see anything. I felt no love, no connection, no bond. This wasn't what I imagined, considering I had seen all these images of new mums holding babies, citing this as the best day of their life. So I kept this hidden as I mentally struggled with myself. You see, I really hated my baby. She was very much a chore to me. Sorry, I'm losing my place, I'm trying. It's quite emotional to go back and think about this. I don't have any cute memories of my baby. In fact, I didn't love her until she was about a year old after a lot of help. All I have of her early life are these really horrible, ingrained events. When my baby was only six weeks old, I pushed her away from me and I screamed at her. I screamed that I hated her. I begged her to leave me alone, to stop beating from me. And why would she just not sleep? I remember just sitting on this bed and sobbing, just screaming at this tiny little human that I hated her. I never felt so alone and so isolated and such like a failure in my life. Sorry. I get quite emotional when I'm talking about this because it's really painful. Sorry. <laughs> it, the depression seemed to warp and play on my mind so much that it started to impact my relationship with my partner. Now this is my partner of 10 years that we had been in love. There was no issues, no troubles. One day after a really trivial upset in the morning, I broke down and I said that he had to leave. He had to go. I could do this all better without him. And I believed it because I wasn't much a fan of him either. I really resented him. Because he got to go to work. He got to go away from this baby and have a life. Meanwhile, I was reminded every single day that I was a failure, that I was a poor mum that could not love their baby. Luckily, my partner didn't leave, he stood by me and he begged me to get help. This all came to a head when he came back from work one evening to a darkened out flat and what he thought was a locked bathroom door. I was in the bedroom trying to hush this baby to sleep. But he came in and seen this bathroom door and panicked and he freaked out and he ran to the door and he was banging on it and he was screaming my name. I wouldn't answer because I'm in the room trying to get this baby to sleep. I was getting really, really angry with him, but the more silent I was, the more he banged on this door. 
And he was banging on this door because he thought I was in there taking the life of myself and my baby. And this is why it's so incredibly important that we share the reality of what postnatal depression is for mothers. Because when we don't share, we make people believe that they're alone and they're isolated. I kept this hidden for a long time because I never seen anyone else say that they hate their baby. I never seen anyone else say they're screaming at their baby. So I kept this all hidden and a part of me. It wasn't until a while after this and he pleaded that I was showing signs of psychosis that I thought, I'll go and get help. And after I got help, I got really, really, really angry and I thought, as a new mum, why did I not know about postnatal depression? Why did no one speak about it? Why did no one complain about how hard this was? No one spoke about rage or frustration or anger as part of depression. And I went through many years of my life with my daughter suffering from all these, but I kept it within me. I would compare myself to these other mums that could drop off their kids and not be angry. I thought I was just a really rubbish and poor parent. My temper was so short that I would snap often. And one day I picked up the kid from school, uh, from the grandparents, and I took her to the supermarket, which you should never do with a three-year-old in the evening, we all know this, but I did. And she acted just like a Thai three-year-old does. And it enraged me and it really made me angry. And as we drove home, I could feel this rage building. I could not calm myself down. And when we got home, I stood and I towered over this tiny three-year-old and I rage screamed at her. And I rage screamed until she burst into tears. I will never forget the day that my daughter stared up at me with wide eyes and completely terrified by her own mother. I felt like such a monster. No one else screams at their baby until they cry, and a loving mother certainly would not do that. But this is the face of depression. This is the face of a mother so crushed by comparison that she would rather believe that she's an unfit parent than realize that she's just doing her best. And this is what we do to people when we keep it silent, when we make them believe that they're the only ones going through this. Now, I went through a lot of inner pain and turmoil about how I felt in my journey in motherhood. It wasn't until I watched the video of new mothers describing the moment they knew they had postnatal depression. In this video, one mum said, it's when she screamed at her newborn baby that she knew she was seriously ill. This video really, really upset me and it made me cry. And then it lifted this tremendous weight from my shoulders because I was no longer alone. I was no longer the only person that had screamed at a newborn. I didn't judge this woman. I envied her and I thanked her and I thought, if she can do this for me, then I can do this for other people. And this is why it's so incredibly important that we divulge the truth, that we let other mothers know that they're not alone in their struggles. Because motherhood isn't all cute pictures and snuggles. It's extremely dark for a lot of us. It's mothers just screaming in anger over trivial things. It's mothers believing that they're poor partners because they can't love. It's mothers losing friends because they don't want to be there. It's mothers just living in silence and in shame, believing that they're failures because we push a false image of motherhood. In 2018, it was reported that suicide was the leading cause of death in new mums. I just want you to take a moment and realize what that means. This means that we're killing people because they don't believe that they're good enough or they're maternal enough or that they're doing enough for their family. We have the power to stop this. We have the power to speak up and say, actually, this is my story. I screamed at my kid too, because it's so incredibly powerful, because it releases this pressure and the silence of depression. Depression loves to feed off your shame and your guilt. It wants you to believe that you're the only one going through it. And so you do believe it, and you go further and further down a hole of isolation. But all it takes for some of us, like myself, to be saved is for someone to share their experience. And I do say saved because motherhood can be that dark 
I did fantasize about how to end the pain, how to protect my daughter from this toxic, toxic mother. But this is all false and we can change this. I know that it's not easy to share, but I hope we understand how incredibly important and powerful our words are. The pressure to be mum is crushing for some of us, but it doesn't need to be. We all hold the power to help someone, to listen, to share our story. Because for some of us, it can change our life, and for others, it can actually save their life. Thank you.